Hey all, so in this video, we're gonna talk about how to actually bring the railing families that you've purchased into your project. It's a little bit tricky because it's not the workflow probably that you're used to. If you've bought our other families, it's different. And it's probably not what you're used to um, when you go out online and you download families from the internet. And the reason is because railings are not what's called a loadable family. So in Revit, there are three types of families. There's loadable families, and those are probably what you're used to. When, when you hear someone say a family, they're usually referring to a loadable family, meaning like a door or a window or a fridge or other piece of furniture, something that's a .dot uh, .rfa file. That's what a Revit family file, that's the extension, .dot .rfa. So anything that's a .dot .rfa file is a loadable family, and you're used to downloading those and then loading them into a project using the load command. So the other types of families are system families and in-place families. We're not going to talk about an in-place family um, in this video because it's not relevant. A system family is what railings are. Examples of system families, families are railings, walls, stairs. They are families that um, don't exist outside of the Revit project environment. You can't load in a stairwell you can't load or stairway, you can't load in railings, you can't load in walls. You create walls inside of the project environment. You create stairs inside of the project environment. You create railings inside the project environment. So because of that, um, you're not gonna load in railings like you would expect to. So I'm gonna show you how you bring them into your project. So when you downloaded our, our railings, you got a folder that looked something like this. And in that folder, there's a .rvt file. And .rvt means it's a project file. So you're going to open up that project file. And by default, it's going to try to open in 2017 because this is a 2017 Revit project. And the reason I do that is so, well, if you've been working in Revit long, you know that you can't open up, you can't, it's not backwards compatible ever. If I would have made the railings in 2023, uh, which is the current, I, I currently use Revit 2023 because it's the most current version. But if I would have used that to make all of these railings, that means any of you out there who didn't use 2023 or newer would not be able to access these. So I go all the way back to 2017 so that everyone from 2017 forward has access to these. So what's going to happen is it's either going to open in 2017 if you have that on your computer, or it's going to upgrade the folder or the file to whatever version you're using. If you're like me and you have one, two, three, four, I have five different versions on my computer. Um, what you need to do is first open up the version of Revit that you want these railings to be in, and then you'll open up the file. So it's not as confusing as it sounds. Let me show you what I mean. So here is the download file. Here's the Revit project file with the railings in it. This is what I need to open. I'm going to my project that I'm working on right now is in version 2023 of Revit. So I'm going to open up version 2023, and then I'm just going to drag and drop this project into 2023, and it's going to upgrade it. And it's going to tell me it's going to upgrade it. And depending on how fast your machine is, this may take um, like one minute. It could take several minutes. So um, we're going to let mine upgrade, and then once it opens, uh, we'll start from there. Okay, so it took about three minutes and now it's open on my computer. So I'm going to, oh, sorry, I have 2017 open. I'm just gonna expand this. So here we are in Revit 2023 and here is the railing file. So your file may look different than this. If you bought all of our railing families, you should see exactly what I'm seeing. If you only bought the interior or exterior or just the fence families, you will see just those families in there and you won't see the other ones. But your, full, your uh, file that you open should look something like what's on my screen. It shows you, basically they call this um, like a display file and it displays all the different families and then their names. So you can just come in here. So the goal would be so that you could easily come in here and copy whatever you needed and then paste it into your project. So that's what we're gonna do. So the reason I opened it in that I opened it in 2023 is because the project I want the, to use these railing families on is also in 2023. So I'm just going to open up my project that I'm working on, and we're going to copy the railing 
from here into that project. If you have a template folder, you could, or if you have a template, a Revit template file, you could just open your project template up and load all of these families into that and save the template. And then your template would now have all of these railings in it so that when you go to start a project, the railings will already be in your project. So this is my project. It's just a residential home. And I want to put a fence in here and I don't have any fences yet loaded in. So that's what we're going to do. We're just going to hop back over to this file and we're just going to get the fence that I want. Let's say, where's the vinyl fences here? I just want this six foot vinyl fence. So all I'm going to do, if you want all of them, you can't, let's just say we want all three vinyl fences. So I'm going to shift or uh, control click all three of them. And then I'm going to right click and copy. Uh, actually, sorry, I'm going to do control C. Then I'm going to hop back into my project and I'm going to do control V and it's going to tell me it's trying to paste in a bunch of different stuff. That's okay. And there we go. And I'm just going to paste in my three fences. And once they're in here, I can delete them because now the railing has been added to the project. So now if I just go to a site plan, now I can hit the railing command and I'm used to doing shortcuts. So I never know where these commands are. There we go. So we hit the railing command and now let's just, I, let's just put a railing at the edge of the property here. I'll just follow along this edge. Stop it here. Okay, I'll hit finish. And now when we look in 3D, oh, yeah, put a handrail. I forgot we need to choose the family. So we just chose vinyl. So I'm just going to type in vinyl. So here's our vinyl fences. There's four foot. Let's do a six foot vinyl fence. Let's do that one. And there is the fence. And you can see that's not great right now. So let's do a couple things. I'm going to change the filtering so that we don't see the demoed site. Okay, so now you see the fence is floating. And if you watched my last video, all we have to do now to get it to follow the topography is click on the fence, hit pick new host, and I will hit the topography. And there it goes down onto, oh, did I not click the right thing? I don't think I clicked the right thing. There we go. There it hosted to the topography. And now I have my vinyl fence along that side of the property. So it's just that easy to pull it. All you're, all you're doing is opening one project and copying the fences to the next project. The only caveat is you just need to make sure that you, you first open the railing, the, the railing project. You open that first in whatever version of Revit you want to use for the your current project, right? Because if I would have opened it in 2017, which I do have it open in 2017, you can't copy and paste from other Revit project, uh, other versions of Revit. So if I came in here and I tried to bring the glass railing in and I copy, control C, and then I go from, so I'm in 2017 now, and if I go to 2023 and I hit control V, it's just trying to bring in the vinyl. See, it doesn't, it didn't recognize that I copied the glass railing. So it just tries to do what it already did. So that's that's the only caveat. You just need to make sure you're in the right version. But other than that, it's that easy. So let me know if you have any questions or concerns. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.